Agent Carter, Season 2, Episode 2, Thoughts. This episode is called A View in the Dark. So, spoilers for everything MCU leading up to it, including this episode, but not for anything that came out after in the MCU after this episode first premiered. Another episode I love, and let's dive right in. So, yeah, they get some material out of Edwin being physical, you know, lifting weights and, you know, yeah, trying to do, trying to use judo against Peggy and such. Yeah, I, I, I think they were doing a better job with, with Edwin in the first season where, like, what's humorous is that, you know, he's a butler who, you know, the closest thing he's gotten to spy to spycraft is he caught one of the, was it, a, a, or someone in the kitchen staff trying to steal a utensil, and now he's taking part in this spy stuff. Here, they just, they seem to not really know what to do with him without pushing it into kind of ridiculous, you know, it, it season... Seasons 2 and 3 of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. didn't run into this kind of, of problem. Compa you know, they they push things further than in Season 1, but they have a clear, they have some clear boundaries. Also did not love later in the episode when the, the Flamingo Bernard pops up. And... Let's see. I, I will say I'm, I really appreciate that, you know, Violet meeting Peggy, that they got that out of the way already instead of us spending forever, it's, you know, just this thing of, oh, you know, maybe eventually the two of them will meet. And, you know, I knew I recognized, yeah, so Sarah Bolger, who plays... Violet did the voice for Eleanor Lamb in Bioshock 2. So I don't I don't think I've seen her face in anything else, but I did recognize the voice. Yeah. Um and and I I really appreciate that they actually really get along, you know. Um Peggy there, you know, there had been some romantic tension between her and Sousa, but she's accepted that he's that that, that that's not going to happen, and so has he. You know, it's it's instead of this idea of you know, oh, all women are in constant competition. That's a patriarchal notion meant to prevent women from being able to fight back against the, yeah, being taken advantage of under patriarchy. So I'm really glad the show is going against that. And, yeah, so the um, JS is being moved, the, the corpse is being moved, and the the two are are both shot. And, you know, as they point out later, this had to be, a professional thing and yeah so at the at the council meeting we learn that one of the people there was behind he, he orchestrated the crash of 1929 which you know it's one of those things like if it was something that was just like super obviously like oh wow that's just a complete ridiculous conspiracy theory kind of thing you know, it, like, oh, hold on, where, crap, I'm thinking of something else. Um, hmm, actually, I suppose it arguably is, no, it's, it's one of those things where, like, if you were looking at how things were going, you could probably guess, eventually, there's going to be, you know, the bubble is going to burst. For each time there has been a bubble bursting, you know, and, and on some of the ones that are coming up, yeah, there, you know, there was someone saying this is 
this bubble is going to burst. And let's see. Um, right, and we get more of the the receptionist. I I don't think they're going to have her in every episode of the season, but I'd like that. I'd, I'd 100% be down for like she she almost gets the words out, even though that's that's clearly Peggy. Like you met, you already know what she's you know. You don't have to go through the spiel of you know. Is there anything else I can help you with? You know what she wants. You know just. I, yeah, it's, <coughs> I, f I found it pretty funny. Let's see, and, yeah, you know, very clever with Dr. Wilkes managing to, to write a time and place so that he can indeed cooperate with Peggy and possibly help with the case as well. And... Yeah, Peggy realizes that Sousa is going to propose to, to Violet, which is sweet, and I really hope that it's not going to be one of those things where one of them dies, because like by the end of the episode, he still hasn't proposed, and they seem very sweet together, and they are very doomed. Let's see. And, yeah, we get some... some we see some of the stuff that the the car can do, some of the spy type stuff. I mean, I get that they wanted to do a joke there, but would would Peggy really press a button that she didn't know what did after seeing that this is like a spy car? That felt kind of awkward. Although you know the thing about up. Is there a mirror up there which does feel like, yeah, I honestly, I 100% believe that Howard Stark likes to watch himself while having sex. That sounds 100% like, you know, he's not 100% Patrick Bateman, but he's not 100% not either. And, yeah, we see Whitney Frost you know, be treated with a lot of misogyny, which, you know, the, it's one of these things, like, I really wish that we'd seen that before we learnt that she was evil, like, that uh, just, yeah. But I do appreciate, you know, we have several details, like, there's the thing about you know, the, the makeup and the clothes and the lighting, like, basically, according to the director, everything is wrong here. Like, just, yeah, every, every single thing bothers him. And he, you know, he, he says, I thought you knew how to light older women. Now, the actress is from 1978, so... Yeah, she'd be less than 40 when this episode was filmed. And yeah, sadly, you know, she's she's over 35. And for, yeah, there's a lot of people who think for an actress, that's that's old. You know, so if, there's, there's something really compelling there. But it's tainted by the fact that we already know she's a villain. So it's not... You know, we, we really barely got any time where we could see her as sympathetic before we found out that she took part in in murder. So I, I wish that that had been... Yeah. And, and really, like, you could very easily have had this brief scene appear in episode one before the reveal. But, yeah, you know, it's... <clears throat> it is at least, you know, there was one thing I, I talked about in my video on episode one of season two of the show. That is something that actually, like, shows some, some sympathy. It's, it's criticism of Hollywood that shows sympathy for the people who don't have that much power in Hollywood. So, yeah, I do appreciate that. And, yeah, so... 
Peggy with Dr. Wilkes some of the time resembles more a date than, like, and you know, a secretive but still, like, you know, yeah, he is cooperating with law enforcement, but, yeah, it was, it was several good scenes there, and she does get some important information, and, yeah, you know, once Calvin and Whitney are talking in her changing room, you know, it's very much this really harsh stereotype, like, essentially, you know, the, her character, she is somewhat insecure about her appearance, you know, people are, are like, pushing her around, she's not quite where she wants to be in life, and because she's a woman, this is supposed to, you know, this is up, oh, this is her villain origin story, when really, like, some of the stuff, like, if this character was male, yeah, this would just be the, the start of, like, you know, I mean, Rocky, Rocky, you know, the, the first Rocky movie and, and several of the others, but especially, the, you know, the start of that first Rocky, you know, yeah, from 1976 or whatever, you know, yeah, that's, that's a very similar starting point, but, you know, he's, he's the hero, he's the one we empathize with, but because this, you know, so yeah, I, I I really do love how many women are on this show. Like I, I noticed as I was watching this episode, basically every scene has at least one woman, and there's like there's at least one scene that has three. Like the the when when Peggy and Violet are talking, you have Peggy, Violet, and Rose there. You know the like there's three women and only one man. That's really cool, but, and, and I will say, most of the female characters on the show so far are, you know, good gals. You know, they're, they're on the side of good, but some of these, like, villain characters, yeah, just really not, not a fan. Um, but I think there's room for it to, because I do really like... The actress is called Wynne Everett. I, I think her performance is very strong as, as Whitney Frost. But, you know, when, yeah, once she's, like, telling Calvin, you let them walk all over you, like you always do, you know, that's supposed to tell us, the audience, oh, so he's letting her walk all over him, and just, yeah, it's such a, such a misogynistic uh, trope. Let's see. And, but yeah, you know, he explains, uh, you know, they, they nixed the zero matter. As of tomorrow, there will be zero, zero matter. And, uh, right, right, the, yeah, uh, Dr. Wilkes explains how racism really slowed down his, you know, his, he has, at this point, done very well, but he struggled because of the the racism. And, yeah, and he shows the, the film, and, yeah, like, it's... It's basically like this black hole thing. It's very, very cool. But it does... The, the black hole, hungry as it is has no taste for cameras because the camera I can't be the only person who was who was bothered by that it based on the force that it's pulling with it seems like the camera should have been pulled into the the black hole but you know then there wouldn't be film for him to show her I I get that that's why I just feel like there's a there's a happy medium where the camera is slightly further away Maybe, like, make clear that, oh, it was, like, zoomed in or something. Did they have zoom back then? Anyway. Um, yeah, and the several shots are fired, and... 
yeah, it, it was pretty good. When, like, you know, she's, I think, she, yeah, she basically ducks just in time, and then several bullets are fired. That was a, a good shot. I mean, the camera shot. Who's this clown? <laughs> That was that one got me. I'll admit it. That was that was funny. And let's see. You know, it's it's one of those things just like you know, some some people find clowns very scary, some people find find clowns very funny. I think they can be both like an Icarus thick. And yeah, the the they go to to get some some change for the what's it called for the um, um for the phone and immediately like the 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 guy at the shop is like very racist and unpleasant and yeah you know very very realistic depiction sadly and I do, it's one of those things, like, I, I don't love a white woman telling a black man how to handle racism. Again, the, the, I appreciate, uh, you know, certainly a lot of the time the, the show, like a lot of other MCU stuff, tries to be left-leaning, but it doesn't always completely get it right. Like, there's just... These these are two groups who have both been disadvantaged in the West. I, I can't speak to the rest of the world, but at the end of the day, like a a conventionally attractive woman, you know, who can who can find a husband is not necessarily going to have a happier life, but is you know, might have a, a bit more safety, financial safety, security uh, than a black man who might never be able to, to get, you know, so it's just, like, it's not a competition. Uh, and and I realize, you know, I as a cis straight white dude, I'm not trying to, to talk over anyone here, I'm just saying... This is the kind of thing where it's maybe best. Like, I'll grant that it's there's there's a certain level of accuracy to it, but I you know this is the MCU. They're not always trying to be accurate, you know. But certainly back then there there were a number of, of white women who didn't think that highly of of black men. But yeah, it's just. It's it's too it's it's too bad, and I I do really appreciate him. You know, he points out, you know, if you if you if you punch every racist in L.A., you'll have to punch everyone. And earlier he had that line about, you know, the view doesn't make me feel insignificant. This, you know, the racism can make me feel insignificant. And yeah, the good romantic tension between them when they're in the in the phone booth and the thing of I have an idea yeah me me too oh that yeah um, that was my idea too and yeah and and Whitney showing up at the the lab was very very tense and Let's see. Yeah, some good, some good action scenes there. And I, I really appreciate the <clears throat> him pointing out. I know you're not actually going to shoot me while I'm holding this. Also, very cool seeing them get it into the small container. Run. And yeah, so we close with. Whitney with like the zero matter apparently I guess maybe it went into her or something it looks like a scar from I guess we'll find out in, in future episodes but yeah that I, I am very excited to see what happens next 
And so some IMDb trivia for this episode. In the scene in which Whitney Frost is being directed on the fictional set of her latest film, many of Agent Carter's real crew members don 1940s clothing to appear as extras, which I love that. That's so good. The writers originally wanted to call the Zero Matter Element Zero, but consultant and physicist Clifford V. Johnson quickly pointed out to them that there actually is a substance named Element Zero, Neutronium. Peggy and Jason are chased through the Griffith Park Tunnels, which was a prominent shooting location for a number of hit films, including War Games, Back to the Future, and Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Let's see. Adam Hart served as the stunt double for James Darcy in a few situations. The name of Jadwick's project, Ice Dine, is a near homophone of Ice Nine. It's this deadly form of water that freezes at room temperature from the Kurt Vonnegut Jr. novel Cat's Cradle. And let's see. Yes, that is right, and and yeah, someone pointed out in the in the goof section, the villain of the bar of the dance hall is supposed to be inconspicuous, but he's wearing a hat. Ballrooms had hat check services. Men did not wear hats indoors. This made him extremely conspicuous. That is a really good point. And there we go. And it's <coughs> it's the kind of thing that would be very easy to address. Uh, you know, just yeah. If if you took away his hat, suspect would be hatless. Repeat, hatless.